<laughs> Try to do part two. Part two. <laughs> All right. Um, so again, Kathleen Stone from Empire State College. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the MOOC that we're developing, and uh, Ginger Bedell from uh, Buffalo State College will also talk about our MOOC um, because it really is a, a very large team project. Um, so imagine all of you are probably right now thinking, how in the world am I going to have the time, the money, and the expertise in-house to be able to create trainings and actually move the bar and do something with this? Um, that was exactly what I was thinking about when um, I thought to myself, there's these wonderful IITG, you know, these grants that SUNY will give you to do this sort of thing. And knowing that I had uh, a lot of really great expertise across the SUNY system that we could also pull in, uh, we decided to go ahead and apply for this grant to make this MOOC. And so for those of you not familiar with a MOOC, it's just a, a massive open online course. So it's a, a, a open environment where anybody will be able to take this training um, and be able to either take it as we offer it as a facilitated session, or they can use it as an on-demand kind of scenario um, after it's been facilitated. And so I'm going to just talk a little bit about that. Um, we do have an introduction video, but I don't want to try to play it right this second, so I'm going to tell everybody to uh, look us up on YouTube. We've started a YouTube channel, and right now there is the one video that you can see, and if you look for Access MOOC, you will find us, and, uh, and you can watch that introduction video. So it is IITG funded, funded, and it's a huge team. We have instructional designers, we have faculty, we have technologists, disability services professionals. There's nine of us working on this project, um, which can also be challenging at times, but we've managed to figure it out. So we've you know, kind of broken up into smaller teams, and then we also come back and do some group stuff with a larger group. Um, we are using uh, Canvas, and the reason why uh, we chose Canvas is because it was uh, certified by the National Federation of the Blind as being um, accessible for non-visual uh, disabilities. And so that was really important in, in our choice of which LMS we were going to use. And, and again, Canvas has got a open MOOC platform. So it's Canvas Network, not the Canvas that you're thinking of that you would use uh, paid behind a wall at your campus. Okay, so we are using that. Um, everything that we do, again, is going to be Creative Commons licensed. If you're not familiar with Creative Commons, it means that you will be able to reuse any of the content in any way that you like. You can adapt it. You can put it up in your own LMS and, and offer it as a training to your faculty and staff. Uh, whatever you would like to do with the content, we, we are doing this with the hope that you will do that, that you will take this, that you will reuse it, that you will find a way to repurpose it so that it's, it, it meets the needs of your, uh, your faculty and staff. So the course itself is going to be six weeks long, and we will do a facilitated session first, and then it will be on demand. Enrollment starts November 23rd, so uh, if you uh, want to get more information about that, we'll tell you at the end how you'll be able to follow that and make sure that you can get registered. We will start on February 22nd and run straight through to April 4th, um, and, it, and it will be on demand after that, so you'll still be able to access it. And then I'm going to have Ginger come up, and she's going to talk about some of the content within it. Hi. I didn't print anything, so my notes are on here. <laughs> um, I don't want to forget to say anything, so I'm going to use them. <laughs> so our course is organized by three overarching goals. Um, so there are six weeks, but it's really kind of um, divided into three chunks. The first goal is access, success, and completion challenges faced by students with disabilities and our role in reducing those barriers. The second goal is how to, design, how to design learning experiences with accessibility in mind using universal design for learning principles integrated with backward design methodology. And the third goal is the tools and techniques for creating accessible courses for all, for all students based on Section 508 standards and WCAG 2.0 level AA guidelines. Um, so the first week is called Why Accessibility Matters, uh, and really the point of it is to explore how students with disabilities often face academic barriers to access success and completion and why accessible design is so important. We plan to have um, some videos that really 
demonstrate you know why how why accessibility is so important for students with disabilities and also how having accessible content will help or support students who even don't who don't have disabilities and the second week is integrating faculty and staff roles so this is how we can reduce barriers and using proactive course design make accommodations for students and also how individual and group efforts can work to create barrier-free learning environments and how do you so how do you do it with the down arrows yeah works a little too well all right <laughs> all right so week three is a blueprint for equal learning opportunities. And actually week three and week four both really focus a lot on universal design for learning. So the first, first week we're really talking about the theory and how, like what universal design is and how, you know, about the three networks, the UDL networks. And um, we'll, we'll also talk about universal design. Um, participants will actually learn about universal design for learning and they will create an action plan and, so, and apply it to their own learning environment. So depending on whether they might be teaching K-12, they might be teaching in um, higher education, or maybe they are a corporate trainer, we want them to be able to take these principles and apply them to their own situation, their own learning environment, so they'll be developing a learning, an action plan. And then in week four, we, we have all these great videos planned where we're going to interview faculty members and experts who really talk about the specific ways that they have um, that they've implemented the principles of universal design for learning. So how have they, you know, effectively addressed the strategic network, specific examples from people who have done it in their classroom with their students, um, and for the, effect, for the effective learning that, or, yeah, the effective learning network, um, recognition and strategic, all like just great examples that are the ideas and encourage people to proactively design barrier-free environments. Weeks five, and six really gets into the nitty gritty. Uh, so methods for compliant content creation. Um, so commonly, oh, thank you, Ellen. <laughs> um, commonly used methods for creating compliant content based on Section 508 standards. And I, we always disagree how to say this, the WCAG. <laughs> um, in week six, we'll focus on content creation tools and assistive technology. And again, you know, we plan to have videos that show, that demonstrate how to, how to use these assistive technologies and tools so that people can come to the MOOC and actually practice doing it and, you know, come away from the MOOC feeling good that they'll be able to, you know, they know why, they, they know why it's important, they know how it will impact their students, and that they will be able to proactively uh, design accessible courses and, and other types of learning environments too not just courses. So Kathleen's going to come back up and finish us off. All right, so as Ginger said, there's a variety of learning activities that we'll have in the MOOC. Um, just some are things that you already probably could think of. We have a lot of videos that we are creating for every week. Um, for example, Kim, I will uh, our speaker this morning. I'm great, so grateful that she agreed to come early to this. She was here yesterday and spent uh, a good chunk of the day doing video recording with us. So we'll have some great things from her. So look for that. Um, we'll have you know podcasts, and of course, we'll make sure everything that we do is also accessible. Uh, we're striving to make sure that we are that our course is not only a place that you can learn about accessibility, but that it is an example of how you would create an accessible course. Um, we will have uh, readings and different uh, for quizzes. They're just going to be self checks. They're not you know high stakes quizzes. It's used to to actually help people learn. Um, we'll have discussions and assignments and you know what you would think of in a typical course but we are keeping the content and, and the amount of learning that somebody has to do down to about two to three hours a week otherwise it's just way too it would get way too much for somebody who's also busy working and has life and all that kind of stuff yeah has life I haven't quite figured that piece out yet that's okay. <laughs> we'll get back there uh, so uh, the main form of assessment though is going to be peer review assignments one of the nice thing about having MOOCs is that you can do these kind of peer review things um, so you would complete an assignment and then you would review two of your peers 
assignments. And that's how we will um, approach the graded portion, although it's not really graded. It's, you know, are you able to um, get through that assessment and at, at a minimum amount, uh, which we will define. And then it, you'll earn a badge. So I've, I don't know if anybody's familiar with badging yet, but basically um, it is a, a, a digital certificate, if you want to think of it that way. It's a little image, and you can, um, if you, if once you've earned that, a lot of metadata is behind it that stores what you actually did to earn that particular badge. And so each week of content, you're, you'll have a peer assessment uh, that will help you earn that badge. If you get through all six weeks and you get to all six badges, you will then be able to get like the overall master badge and uh, be able to show that off. And uh, all of this also works. Um, we can, we're using Canvas, and they have a plugin called Canva Badges. Um, so we're, we're we're right now in the middle of designing what those badges will look like. We don't have a lot of options, but we're doing our best. Um, and then uh, if, you'll be able to store those in uh, Mozilla's Open Backpack. If you're not familiar with that, look it up. It's really interesting. It's a nice, easy way to share ID badges you earn from anywhere. Um, and then you can put those on LinkedIn, you can add them to Facebook, wherever, you know, it's got lots of different options for sharing out your badges. Uh, so that's our main assessment. Um, the other thing that we're really trying to do is make sure that we keep the conversation going. So while this is only gonna be a six week course, we don't want this to stop. Um, as much as I keep talking to Megan saying that I'm, I'm done, because I keep, we keep pulling each other into these things. Um, no, I'm, we probably will not be done. <laughs> so the idea is that we want, we want people to participate outside of this course as well. Uh, so uh, we will, we do have a, a Twitter hashtag already. It's Access MOOC, and you can start following along with that now if you would like, because as we do things, we'll keep that updated. Uh, we, are, um, we are developing a YouTube channel, and you can search for that right now, as I said, by just searching Access MOOC, and you will see our introduction video. Um, and we also have a Gmail account. So if you just wanted to email somebody, and since there is nine of us and you're not sure who would I email, you can email accessmook at gmail.com and one of us will get your email and get back to you. So nice and simple ways to communicate with us. Uh, one other thing that we're gonna do that I don't have up on the slide is that we will have a Facebook page as well so that we can continue to con that conversation in something a little more than 144 characters, um, which is always beneficial. And then, so just some final thoughts with this now. So um, again, watch for future, future communications about this. We will, we will be pushing it through all sorts of different channels, but if you are really interested in it, follow that, that hashtag access MOOC or just send us an email and we will get you that information as to when it's, when it's actually live and ready to go. You can also just go to canvas.net and you can, and once it's ready for, uh, for registration and enrollment, you will be able to be able to add it and you'll see it on their, on their main page. Um, and so that's pretty much it. And what I'd like to do now is take questions of the different projects that you have heard about today. And so <laughs> Kelly and, and Ann, which I want to uh, take a brief moment just to say how um, thankful I am for Kelly and Ann right now because they just kind of took it upon themselves today to be, to be the, the mic folks to go out into the audience. So any questions for any of the, of the projects, whether you're here or... I have a million questions, but I'll, it's all right, but I'll follow up after this. Um, Lisa, you said you did 50 course reviews. Well, we have more than that. So yeah. Course checks. They're not reviews. They're course checks. How long do you think those took? Uh, good question. I probably should Thanks. have touched upon it. Well, that was the reason we had to move on from doing all the faculty courses, because when you go to do a check, you find things that you can't help but maybe give notes on, suggestions, <laughs> recommendations. Um, I know that I, I took everything from an hour to maybe four because I couldn't help if I'm looking at something that I can see where I can help the course improve to give notes and suggestions. Um, and of course, you know, when I talk to Donna, they mean they could range. That's really why, you know, some yeah. of them were, were faster than others. They, they took a lot longer than we anticipated. I so mm -hmm. it was pretty much top down where you were doing a review as opposed to like the, the faculty member did, the excuse check. me the check uh, <laughs> as opposed to like a faculty member doing a check and comparing notes 
That's, yeah. That all takes longer to coordinate. And yeah, the first time around with yeah. small grant, trying to get something yeah, yeah. started and trying to get this initiative just moving forward to the, the campus so that faculty are really thinking about it and starting to work. Um, but that could be a way to, yeah, to move forward in the future. Actually, um, I was just wondering with the online MOOC, um, accessibility is really important. We're also talking about uh, a lot about um, you know, measuring our effectiveness. Are you going to have any kind of pre and post surveys so that you can measure, uh, assess how you're doing with the MOOC across time? Yes, we are. <clears throat> um, and I'm hoping I can, everybody hears me. If I don't know if I'm close enough to the mic. Um, yeah, so we, we are doing a research study around this. So we're looking at a couple different things. One, we want to look at, at uh, just the base knowledge that people perceive they have before they take this, and then, and then what, what they think at the end. Like, do they feel like they've gained uh, some new knowledge? Obviously, we're going to have um, some statistics on whether or not they earn their badges and that sort of thing. But we really want to know, uh, you know, what, what did people think they already knew before they started, and then where, do they, where are they once they're done? The other thing that we'll be doing, um, I've been involved with a couple of other um, MOOCs that we've done through through the college, and we've done some research on motivation and completion in MOOCs, and so I want to continue kind of looking at that as to how um, how what we've done, especially related to badging, how that has impacted their motivation to get through that, and if it's um, or what their motivation is coming in. So one of the problems with some of the the, the MOOC research up to this point is it's always just been on completion, but that doesn't tell you the whole story. People don't take a MOOC necessarily to complete it in the traditional sense. So we really want to find out as well, what what is it, why are they taking this? You know, what are, what's their motivation before they even get in? Because um, that'll tell a lot more than just the numbers. So yes, we, we are doing some research. Hi, Kathleen. Uh, who, and Ginger, uh, who's the intended audience for the MOOC and what kind of level of digital literacy do you need to complete the course and are you going to have materials available for people to kind of tell them how to work with Canvas? Because I know on our campus we use Blackboard, so I don't really know how different it is. Do you want to take that one? I could try, but you might need to fill in. I don't have a lot of questions, yeah, so I sorry. have to make sure I get it all. So I think our intended audience is really anyone. Yes, um, faculty, staff. E like I said, even people who are in, you know, pr in, in the business world and professional development, you know, you, you might be developing a website or, you know, learning content for your employees. So even in that regards, um, staff development, professional development. And as far as, um, like, the technical ability, we are going to have instructional. The whole, there's like a whole introduction, get, you know, how to use Canvas, where to find things, how to get help, all of that is the, is the first thing that people will go through before they even get to Module 1. It's actually page 2 right now. So we have, welcome <laughs> to the course, here's the overview, and then the next page is, how do you use Canvas? So yes, we, and there's a, the Canvas network, again, the open MOOC version, has a, um, an orientation that yes, students can take. And for the, while we're doing the facilitated six weeks, you know, all of the people who are involved in the MOOC will be taking turns, making sure that we really um, monitor the discussion to really provide support to anyone who needs it also. I know I asked like three questions in one, I'm sorry. I guess what I meant by the intended audience and the uh, liter digital literacy is like, I'm an adaptive technology specialist. I'm a faculty member, I'm a staff person in the career center, like what is the degree of, of technical difficulty as in, um, is, is it w working with word processing documents, is it to the extent of captioning your own videos, is it to the extent of creating your own accessible website, I, so that's, so, sorry. No, I was like, no, that's fine. Um, so, so we're assuming that you're coming to this not knowing anything, so it's, it's, a, it's baseline. Right, so it's uh, we're not getting into uh, you know huge technical things. Um, in fact, one of the one of the first uh, type of assignments once you start learning about more technical stuff is really how would you look at this without using technical stuff, right? Because we don't all we're not all able to do that. Um, so so it's a, it is at a basic level. And, and so the, the next person asking a question is actually part of the team. I just want to help you out that. I will frame it as a declarative sentence then. Uh, 
Um, so to that point, I think the other um, piece we wanted to develop into it was where do you see yourself and your role, right, with yes. respect to all of the the sort of broad, the narrow and broad ways we've been discussing accessibility and universal design, because it's certainly, I mean, I think I can say, is it our belief? I think it's our belief. I think I can say this, <laughs> that it's not um, the responsibility of Kelly's office, right? Just like writing isn't the responsibility of the English department, sorry, conference. Or, you know, I mean, it's it, everybody um, actually needs to be involved in this whole enterprise. So I, I think we're purposely designing it in that way. Now, that sounded like a question. I should know the answer to that question, but I think that's how we're doing it. You right? know, and, and that actually reminds me, I know I don't want to put everybody on the spot, but if those people who are working on this MOOC could stand up real quick. Um, right now, Ann and Kelly are already standing up because I just want, that includes you, Michelle? Well, you can stand up. Um, so we have a big team, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows that they are here and that it's not just the engineer doing this. <laughs> I promised Janet that I would make an announcement, though, okay. when, once we're done. Okay. I don't want to forget that. I think we might think be almost ready. Yeah. Is there any questions from oh, the internet? No. Nope. Nope. No. It's not. <laughs> so, Lisa, did you want to say? Yeah, anything? Janet. Um, um, the chair of our fact council, uh, fact advisory board, wanted me to um, to remind you that she will send a link to the recorded sessions today for you to distribute through your the, to the fact reps, so that if anyone um, was wondering how they might get access, it, it'll be it'll be coming through our ch normal channels. Okay, soon. That's all I have. I don't and have the link either. But soon, soon you can just email us. Yes. Will you also post it on the um, the um, blog site, the accessibility blog site? Can you do that as well? Yeah, yeah. that'd be perfect. Everywhere. That'd be yeah. great. Everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> Anywhere we can put it that people will let us. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank you. You're well, thank you very much. Just bear with me for one moment. So um, up here on the screen um, are, are the logos of all of our sponsors, but um, PostCap um, and ACS did the, um, the, live, the, captioning. the live captioning for us, um, so we thank them for that. University Faculty Senate, um, the Faculty of Community Colleges, uh, Council of Community Colleges, um, Center for Professional Development, uh, Empire State, um, CCDA, which is the Consortium of Say it again. Can you say it into the mic? Yes, please. It's uh, the Western New York Collegiate Consortium of Disability Advocates. And then, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And then, um, NYS DSC, the New York State Disability Service Council, um, also sponsored this event. So we would really like to um, thank them. So if we could give, you know, a round of applause for all the people that. That really truly made this event possible for us. Um, as Fact Two um, was a great sponsor in, you know, getting and encouraging us to continue this symposium. Um, truly, without these sponsors, we could not have completed this event. Um, also, want to go ahead and just thank again um, those on the planning committee. So Sumana Silverheels and Nasli Kurgen and Ginger, if I'm aware, and then myself and Kathleen and Kelly Herman um, together. You know, just week after week. You know, reaching out, finding sponsors, finding um, presenters to come and bring to you today. So, 
um, you know, we thank them um, for allowing this and all of you for coming today. We really had a great turnout. Those of you that are online, um, you know, we hope that you found this beneficial today um, in moving forward. And just to, um, we hope that you can, you know, take something back to your campus um, and continue to move this forward. We hope to um, possibly see you online in the MOOC. Uh, to see you at Elford State, um, possibly. Um, and the other thing that I just wanted to again point out um, is that FACT2 also sponsors um, a CIT conference in May. Um, it's actually, I think, May to June. It's like the very last at SUNY Potsdam. I know it dips over into um, to June this year. Um, so, and I, one of the tracks um, at CIT this year is also on accessibility and student access. So, um, another a great place for us to kind of join together to continue the conversation. So thank you for joining us today, and I don't know if you have anything else to say. I was going to add that we'll be presenting at that SUNY CIT conference and the results. So if you, what you're yeah. asking about the, the research, we will be presenting at that. Um, so keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, I really want to thank um, the rest of the planning committee, because this was a huge undertaking, and I don't think any of us really thought about mm -hmm the uh, amount of time that something like this takes. Um, so I uh, wouldn't have been able to do any of this without Megan, and I was so, I dragged her in, and yeah. We drag um, each other. <laughs> so I want to make sure that, that everybody acknowledges that as well. And before we actually break and let you all go, um, do, does anybody have any last minute questions on anything from today? I know, it's an open question. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you and drive home safely.